Hypothetical can only choose one. Weekend flying, most mind-blowing bando freestyle location imaginable, and only first person to do so, but can record only using analog, no action cams. Or weekend flying a bando, not bad, nothing special, with the latest, greatest uh, action camera not available on the market yet. Um, I choose the first one because at this point in my life, my priority would be me having an awesome experience flying a cool location. And uh, like I, I more often than I like to admit, I go somewhere awesome to fly. And then I think I could make a video out of this. And then I'm like, you know what? I just want to fly today. And I don't make a video. Um, for whatever reason, like, because my freestyle sucks and I'm a terrible pilot and I don't think anybody wants to see me fly, maybe, because I'm a little sort of burnt out on making vlog type content. Like the last, I like, I really like this content. Um, the last, uh, the last the vlog type like content I made was this one. Before it closed, right? When we went to this <laughs> abandoned like, hey, mall. Hey, you want to go to the mall? Which one? The sad mall? No, no. Oh my God, 22,000 views. That's not very many views, considering how hard I worked on this video. I'm really disappointed that I didn't get more than 22,000 views. That's sad. Right, That's why, why, I don't, why I don't make this content anymore. We are at Richland Mall in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh my hey, God, I've gone over time. Suspect. The Damn it. Or, or you can shave it. We're not. <laughs> yeah. I put a ton of work into this video too. I was so proud of it. I still am proud of it. Um. Yeah. Anyway, you can go watch the video if you want to watch it. It's a pretty cool video. Phantom FPV crashes his drone in this elevator shaft and has to go retrieve it. He has to climb down in this elevator shaft. to the internet. We don't know what happened to him. Never seen again. Jesus Christ, dude, you really put it down there. Anyway, it was really fun. It was a really fun video. I it was I worked my ass off editing it, trying to make it as good as possible. Got twenty two thousand views. That's like not nothing, but it's not spectacular. So I would choose the first one because I would just go rip the awesome location and then I would have the DVR, but who cares? Because it's probably shitty anyway, and I would have a good time. There you go. I would like to this is and this is important, guys. This is important. Um, it's guerrilla war war whooping. Like guerrilla warfare. It's guerrilla. It's not guerrilla like the animal. It's guerrilla whooping, not gorilla whooping. Can we get that right, please? It even says right here gorilla is sometimes confused with gorilla. That's an animal. Okay. I feel like like we gotta we gotta hold ourselves to a higher standard. Tom Mayard. Um, I don't know what my problem is. Every time I see one of Tom's comments, I have a big reaction. <laughs> get it? Get it? Anybody get it? Come on, somebody get yes. it. Make save my dad joke. Tom Mayard says, I'm debating whether I should stay. Thank you, Plenty. I should stay on analog the, or, or switch to Waxdale if I plan to do mountain long range. Heard mixed things about high def for long range. I mean, uh, you if you're going to do long range with, an high de with a digital system, uh, Waxdale is the one that's going to give you, well, between Waxdale and DJI, Waxdale will give you uh, the possibility of having more range um, just because they, DJI has an arbitrary uh, limit of uh, between 13 and 30 something, 29, 31 kilometers, depending on which goggle and VTX you're using. Um, whereas Waxnail doesn't have that arbitrary limit uh, and can potentially go further. Um, as far as analog versus Waxnail though, that's a tough one. I mean, analog is a classic choice for long range. Um, you can you can have a ridiculous amount of output power. You can buy five watt VTXs if you want to, and just get a crazy amount of output power. And when the video starts to break up, it doesn't just go away entirely. It sort of becomes staticky, and a lot of times people can recover better. I, I think if you were like serious about long range, I would encourage you to learn it on analog, 
just because that's what most long range pilots are doing. And like, I think when you're starting out, I feel like when you're starting out, it makes sense to look at what everybody else does and then try that. And then if you go, okay, now I understand that. I think there's a better way. But I think that there's a tendency sometimes for beginners to go, well, that's clearly not right. I want the latest and greatest and not think about the reason why nobody else in the field does it that way. Um, So like if you just like, yeah, but I don't want to. Well, yeah, walk snail can get her done. But I think I think that there I would want to understand the benefits of of analog compared to walk snail. And I would lean towards analog for long rangey stuff. Um, because like, like I said, with analog, if I want a five watt VTX, I can get it, you know, whereas with Waxnail, I don't have those choices. Uh, building up the 3DP titanium Gemini FPV wing, going with the O3 and FPV goggles too. What do you suggest on antenna for the air and goggles side? I would just start with the default antennas in the O3 and the G2. Um, everybody wants to upgrade shit. And, and I think that there's, uh, like, that's fine, but like, at least try the default antenna before you spend the money on an upgraded one. Do you know for a fact that you're not going to get the range you want off the default? Or are you just like upgrading for upgrade's sake? Far be it from me, a YouTube influencer, to tell people not to just wildly spend money. But like, uh, especially because like if this was a set of analog goggles where the, the factory antennas were kind of shit and you know you're going to buy aftermarket antennas anyway, then I'd be, abs- I'd be all about it. But the, the range on the O3 and the G2 with the stock antenna is pretty freaking exceptional. Now, it may not be what you need, but I would at least give it a try. It's better than you think. And the other thing is, like, upgrading the antennas on the G2 is a pain in the ass. Yes, the G2 have removable antennas, but the aftermarket antennas are kind of clunky. And and uh, and so like I especially with the O3 and the G2, I go I go out of my way to not upgrade the antennas unless I absolutely need to. Um, Ghost Branch wonders. Back when the first DJI Avada came out, people took it apart to salvage the O3 VTX and camera for their FPV builds before the DJI Air unit came out. Why is no one experimenting with parts from the Avada 2 to make an O4 FPV quad before? the O4 system comes out. And is the O4 cam by any chance compatible with the O3 air unit? Um, I don't think the O4 cam is compatible with the O3 air unit, although I don't know that anyone has tested that. Um, The O3 cam was not compatible with any other air unit, and the Vista cams are not compatible with the O3, so it seems like the cameras are not cross-compatible between generations, although I, I can't say that for a fact because I haven't tested it, neither has anyone else as far as I know. Um, uh, I I think that most people are pretty happy with the O3. The O4 in the Avada is not a night and day improvement over the O3. It's a pretty marginal improvement. And so I suspect like the difference between the Vista and the O3 was pretty huge. And I think there was a big demand there. I suspect that many people are just sort of satisfied with the O3's performance and they're not willing to buy a whole freaking Avada just to get the O4 out of it, especially because the O4 seems like it's going to release soon, as evidenced by the fact that the O3 recently had a price reduction. 